Today's MTD Daily, we are visiting Vision Engineering in Woking. I say visiting, I say it every time, we're not visiting. Mark Curtis, live on Skype. So Mark, thank you for joining us, great to have you on board. If people don't know Vision Engineering, give us a quick over overview of it, please. Vision Engineering, 61-year-old uh, English manufacturing company, private company based in Woking, uh, 230 people worldwide, of, a, of whom 120 uh, work in the UK. We've got a full-service manufacturing capability uh, just outside of Woking, which we built two and a half years ago. And uh, in that facility, we have the full range from design uh, through to manufacturer, uh, machine shop, uh, paint shop assembly and then the full uh, support sales dispatch and so on uh, we have another uh, manufacturing capability just outside of um, new york two two hours up the road in connecticut which also has uh, a full service capability with a machine shop and assembly okay so these you mean machine shops ultimately to manufacture products which are your, your optical systems uh, we, we have two sides to the business. Yep. Uh, the traditional side to the business where we started was uh, optical and increasingly digital yep. in recent years. And that's primarily for inspection, uh, measurement and manipulation. And these are supplied primarily to other manufacturers around the world. Right. Uh, the, most of those manufacturers involved in uh, telecoms, uh, in precision engineering, aerospace automotive but uh, increasingly in the last 15 years it's been medical devices okay and i, I must re reiterate this you, you drive into into woking where you're based and this just fantastic state of the art operation comes sort of appears out of the forest almost it's just an absolutely amazing facility and that ties in a with the products that the fine end products you're manufacturing but your machine shop we recently had the joy of going out there we met with um steve and scott who, who showcase what what you've got there but in terms of your machine shop not all the machines but can you just talk me through some of the you know your your favorite ones almost we call them well i mean as, as i say it's a full service shop so yeah. uh, uh, at the one end you've got uh, xyz we've got the um, manual machinist tool makers yeah. as you know uh, tool makers are about as good as they get and those are primarily used for either our own tool making or also very often short very short run parts or um, uh, uh, maintenance we've got of existing uh, equipment. As I said, the, the, the second half of the those, oh, those guys generally, if they want a one-off or a two-off, it's quicker for them to make on their manual machines because A, they're so skilled, and they could do it rather than doing all the CNC programming. Of course, of yeah. course, and uh, they are... Um, there's a notion that they're always older. That is true up to a point because they're experienced, but we've been running an apprenticeship scheme there too because, of course, you need to have the fresh blood in there. Keep that works quite well. Getting new engineers. Over to, over to um, uh, uh, milling and, and turning. Yep. So uh, you you saw our latest Mazak. Um, yeah. Fantastic piece of kit. Can run lights out. Uh, so that's a, the Hyperquadrex, is that right? Because I've not seen those before. Hyperquadrex, yeah. And it, it, it does enable us to deal with a very wide range of materials mm. and most importantly to be able to load up run lights out run multiple parts so it, it, it's been a real addition mm. uh, to what we do in, in addition to that we've got um, well, just, also just saw back on that mazak because we good. interviewed zoltan who was absolutely raving about the machine yeah. but it's, as you say it will run 24 7 because at one end you've got the hydrofeed bar feed but the other other end the guys from hydrofeed have built you a bespoke parts catcher well, we, our specific requirements, we are running relatively low volume with, with high turnover of parts. Yep. So we we looked at what was available and in the end we decided we needed a modification for what was available. So actually it's a customised yeah. uh, binning system. Fantastic. Works a trick. Yeah. Binning as in parts catching, not binning it as in yeah, strapping parts it. Catching. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So, and you've got also, you know, you've got your bridge ports, your robo, drop, um, yeah. robo drills, but also, robo drills, yeah. um, we also uh, had a chat with, remember his name, it was Dan, because he works, he's on the milling team, and he was working yep. the Kitamura, which was supplied by Dugard, of course. He was absolutely raving about this machine. So if you could tell us a little bit about that. Well, the Kitamura, the, the big advantage of the Kitamura is its uh, palletization system. Yep. What it enables us to do is to reduce downtime substantially. This is what we've been working on. So in addition to being able, able to offline program it, we can also then um, palletize the parts, load the parts. We've got quick release fixturing, which enables us to really, really push it hard. 
Okay. Uh, we've got another one, uh, exactly the same unit in America, so that we're able to do um, part programming and, 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 and use it on a common basis. Okay, because you put on there your tombstones, your cubes, your, tri exactly. your triangles. Yep. Exactly. And the zero point, this Lang zero point system, is that right? Yes, yes, yeah. We've we've introduced the Lang zero point system over the last uh, four years now uh, uh, across all of our sites, all of our appropriate machines, and all of our sites. Yeah. Uh, so that 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 enables us to uh, to to really push those machines, really get that downtime uh, to an absolute minimum. Okay, so again, the machine shop itself, it's, it, it was a joy to be there, it really was. I think they, I don't think they enjoyed it so much because guys going on camera always get a little bit nervous, but we had a look around. You could do it right from sort of design, the initial design through to the final finishing and assembly, and that ties in with your suite of products as well. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it, 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 at, uh, at the moment we, we're working a, a, a range of materials, um, uh, aluminium, steel, um, and we, we do get into uh, brass and copper when it's required, increasingly also uh, some different type of composite materials. Uh, it, it, what it means is that because we have the full design facility, we have the full um, machining capability, and then we have the paint job at the end, which I, I think we're going to talk about in a minute. It enables us to really uh, deal with most materials, but also guarantee the finish. Right, yep. So you've got complete, it's actually got complete control of what's going on. So in, well, in terms of the finish, as we mentioned, we mentioned before our range of of, uh, of uh, customer bases, both people who we make complete systems for and people we make um, uh, parts for, and you could understand that the people who are involved in medical devices have a different finish requirement yeah. to those who might be involved in um, automotive. Right. Okay. But you've got again, you've got complete control of that. Now you say yes. about medical, that ties in with the current environment we're in. People can register to start supplying parts for the respirator, things like that. I mean, we've heard mention of B, BSEI, Make UK, then there's a government portal. I know you're involved in this. How, how has yes. the current environment affect, I mean, it's going to affect you because you're, you're essentially a global company. How has it affected you? Well, uh, the if you, if you bear in mind that the vast majority of our customers, they uh, it is capital expenditure when they invest in our products. Yep. And of course, capital expenditure is the first thing which comes under pressure uh, when, uh, when, when, when times are difficult for a range of reasons. Set against that, uh, clearly, no, not, not many people are buying cars at the moment, so that side of it is, is, is problematic, aerospace we know about, yep. but set against that, there is a significant demand in the medical devices, the medical instrumentation, but also, for obvious reasons, telecoms, infrastructure, for example, we uh, we we work quite closely with a, a drone manufacturer, um, often supplying to police forces, oh, okay. and th those have been in the news recently. Yep. So there are uh, there are there is much more pressure from a wider range of industries. People talk about ventilators. We're involved in that. We're on. We're in in, in the consortia. We're moving ahead. We are. Uh, uh, looking to make parts for people, we're looking to help uh, on that. But of course, it is much broader than that. There is a wider range of medical instrumentation required. There is a wider range of equipment supplied into analytical laboratories, and then there's the infrastructure. Yeah. So, but I mean, it is obviously worrying times at the moment. But there are positives from the engineering side of things and the products you're, you're manufacturing. Mark, I'm going to sort of wrap it up there. Thank you very much. And I'm, it was great seeing your machine, your machine, well, the whole facility is absolutely amazing. And that we have done some videos on MTD Network, definitely worth a view. Mark, thank you very much for joining us. And we look forward to seeing you again very soon and your products and, and obviously the machine shop. Thank you very much.